Michael, so many teeth. I don't know if you've noticed that. It's like one big tooth. Hi everyone, I'm Taika Waititi and welcome to Notes on a Scene. I'm doing this with my new film, Next Goal Wins. Oh, oh God! Oh God! It's beautiful! You okay, Cole? It's beautiful! Oh my God! It looks so easy from the bottom! I wanted to see more Pacific Islanders on screen. I just love the idea that there was a that this was a true story. It's a classic underdog story and a really uplifting one. Kind of you know in the vein of all the great sports films. This is just before the team is flying off to the World Cup qualifiers, and they've been training for two or three weeks now to get to this point. And uh, this is they've finally conquered this mountain uh, the day before they they head off. Let's take a look. I know you can make it to the top. Come on, guys. Keep going. Keep going. Don't stop, don't stop. You can take any frame from my films and um, find a great depth and meaning in them because I think about every single moment and I pre-plan every shot. We planted these trees about 17 years ago. The grass was already there. And of course, always, as always, um, you know, we're at the Fibonacci pattern there, which is, you can see in every single frame because I'm an artist and uh, the golden ratio is the most important thing um, in all work. Thomas Rongen, played by Michael Fassbender, gives um, a motivational speech before they head off on their journey. This actually happened. So in, in American Samoa, there's a big mountain and um, you used to have like a gun turret in World War II up there and the coach took the team all the way to the top and he gave them this, this big speech. This shot, of course, was done with a drone. A little miniature helicopter flown by mice. Ah. Ah. Oh God! Oh God! It's beautiful. We shot this whole thing with uh, Steadicam, and a big part of the scene was that Thomas is trying to motivate the the, um, the team throughout um, the whole film, and he's trying to get them, you know, to go up to the top of this mountain. And ironically, when they all run to the top, um, he's the one that's the most winded. I think we were slowly losing light and had to really move fast. And so, Steadicam is a great tool, especially when you've got. 15 people in your scene. It looks so easy from the bottom. Can't breathe. Uh, this spot here, this place, tells of how your brave brothers fought to protect American Samoa and the rest of the world against evil. This mountaintop is actually not in um, American Samoa. We shot the film in Hawaii. There's a bit more infrastructure there. They've got a lot of shows and films that shoot there. And so um, getting crew and gear would have been uh, very hard to source or to uh, move into American Samoa. So uh, we found a lot of um, places within Hawaii that, um, that matched a lot of the locations in American Samoa. I think what's kind of cool about this scene, especially here, if you look at this frame, you get these, this nice backlit stuff with these streaks and streams. And you know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm spiritual. And I do love the kind of um, ethereal feeling that you get from this. And it's like, you've got this, you know, they're on top of the mountain as close as they can be to God. Obviously this big giant ball of fire over there is the sun. And, um, and you know, you get all these, these streaks coming through. And if we actually go back a little bit, you know, you've got these nice big flares and stuff that, that wrap around everyone. And look, look at this guy playing Samson, looks like an angel. And so maybe I am religious. It's just like, you know, as I say, you know, I do plan things religiously. And um, the symbolism of this is that Thomas is amongst the angels, a team of soccer playing angels. Well, tomorrow we set off for the greatest war of them all. The more we talk about these flares, the more I'm really liking them. Fibonacci, baby. Fibonacci right there, leading to God. In two days time, we face our first enemy, Tonga. Screw those guys. There have been so many wars against those assholes. The war of 1825, where they came to take, they came to take our tuna. But we handed their asses to them in a giant tuna can. Thomas Rongan, the coach from my sources who told me, he actually um, just completely made up this, uh, these facts about American Samoa and their rivalry with Tonga and say that there used to be these big wars and that from this gun turret they'd 
defended the, the country against um, Tongan invasions and stuff, and um, which is complete nonsense. Didn't that's not the case. And uh, but what's funny is that he was trying to tell the people who are from the country their history. I still have to pack. I always leave packing to the last minute. It's so weird. No, no, it's That's actually Michael. I really loved like overhead shots and top-down shots. It was an idea that sort of just came to us again in the in, in the moment. We had a drone on hand, and we thought, well, why don't we get up here and see what this will look like? You know, a lot of people would read quite a lot into this, wouldn't they? A lot of brown people carrying a white man down a hill. Don't read too much into it. We all thought it would just be a funny idea. Some people would say, like, oh, it's all about the white guy, because it's kind of like what you expect from a movie, isn't it? Like Dances with Wolves, white people being saved by brown people. And it is, and that's okay. Like we didn't shy away from the idea of like, you know, because the true story is this guy came in to the island, taught them how to become better soccer players, and they taught him how to become a better person. So, you know, it is a, a give and take thing. And the idea of the white savior thing is something like, I think, you know, if, if you want to run away from it, it's for me not as interesting as embracing it and see what, what more you could do with that idea. Because it's, you know, it's an old idea and you know, we've seen it before and just embracing this, this you know, some of the cliches that you might see in, um, in films like this and trying to push them even further, that was the main idea. So if you thought that this was really cool, for it, joke's on you. And so we turn to Matthew 17, when a man says to Lesu, Lord have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and is very ill. Or he often falls into the fire and often into the water. Very clumsy, my boy. I feel really um, smart when um, you know, if I get shots of my films and like you start like obeying like the laws of like thirds and halves. And even if you weren't planning on that, um, you know, when you discover that in your sh in your shots, it makes you feel smarter than you actually are. And of course, you will have noticed that this shot is also representative of a soccer field. So it's foreshadowing the game that they're about to play. And although in the shot, Thomas would seem like the center of, of, the, uh, of the game, all in a, in a game you know as well as I do, because you're all soccer fans, that all of the action, all the real storytelling happens out here in the pitch with the players, not the coach. It's the players who tell the story. And then look, I've done that. And once again, what do we have? The sun. It all comes full circle, doesn't it? Very well thought out moment in my film. And Lesu said, bring him here to me. Good old Lesu. And Lesu rebuked him. And the demon came out of him. And the boy was cured at once. Thomas Rongen um, comes out and is reborn and is now part of the team and welcomed into the fold. I actually feel like that's uh, something that actually happened um, just naturally with, uh, within the filmmaking that, you know, I think Michael came in and you know, everyone here, a lot of them knew each other, but you know, everyone from Samoan and, um, and Pacific Islanders, you know, he became part of their family and they all still keep in touch now and they're all still really good friends. The idea of him being baptized and, and reborn, you know, it, it is a big theme in the film, uh, this idea that someone who um, is kind of all, all but given up on life and has uh, lost his way, finds family in a new place and has to kind of kill that old version of himself and be reborn in the waters of this island. You know, even though it sounds a little kind of cheesy, it's, uh, it's still a really cool concept. People go through baptisms all the time in their lives and um, it doesn't have to be religious ones. It's just when you go in and you kind of wash everything away and you emerge a new person.